All right, guys, this question reads, based on the above diagram, where would you likely see the effects of hyperpolarization of utilizing a benzodiazepine? Okay, so I wanted to create this question because it's kind of a combination of, you know, pharmacology as well as the uh, physiology. And you, and you got to know this, guys. And we, we covered this in the cardiology section, too. But, you, you know, you see this kind of action potential. And, you know, we, we did this before that if it's a, like a more of a cardiac, uh, you know, pacemaker, you have that like plateau phase, right? Well, this one, obviously, uh, the one we're looking at uh, does not. Uh, so we know it's not a cardiac cell per se. So just always remember that when you see that plateau, we know that that was potassium uh, leaking out and then it's a balance with the calcium coming in. Okay. But the real question is, where does the influence of a benzodiazepine in, uh, uh, happen during this action potential, right? Because what's the purpose of the benzodiazepine? Essentially, it's to calm things down, right? Like if you have a seizure, it's too much activity in the brain. You know, it's going too much, too much, too much. So I have to calm things down. I have to make sure it doesn't reach that threshold to fire again. Okay. So what do we know about a benzodiazepine? And we did this in the, uh, I want to play this pharmacology section uh, too, but it basically essentially works like this. Now we just talked about, say, say, say we're here in the brain, right? And if we have, and here's the basically your neuron. Now, if I have too much functioning, too much firing of this neuron, too much, I can have seizure activity, right? Too much, too much, too much. So I got to calm this down. So let's look at what neurotransmitters, my two basic ones that I'm looking at right now, when it comes to either too much or too little uh, firing of neuron, you should be thinking glutamate or GABA. Now, glutamate is the one that's going to be increasing, activating, right? And then GABA is the one that's more on the downside, you know, kind of the calming nature of it. So when it comes to a benzodiazepine, what happens, it works basically on the GABA receptor, okay? Now, and I just put this because here's the, uh, this is just the, releases the GABA at this point. So here we are in the neuron. And when in the neuron, we have this uh, GABA receptor. Now, more specifically, and they can test you on this, and I got some short videos that are going to pound you on this. The benzodiazepine works on the GABA A. Okay, remember that GABA A. So, if I was to zoom in right here, you know, it looks, you know, essentially uh, something like this, and it's a channel, right? So, the GABA comes, and I'm, so, I'm sorry, the benzodiazepine comes and attaches right there. Now what that does, it had, makes a conformational change. Um, you know, a fancy way of saying it's like an allosteric, um, how do I say, like an allosteric binding. Basically it creates that conformational change, which then uh, allows GABA kind of sits there. The, the GABA comes to the GABA receptor and sits there. And now what it does, it increases the firing Okay, increases the frequency of what coming in? Chloride. Okay, so basically, again, benzodiazepine, what's the mechanism? It increases the frequency of the chloride ion. It attaches right here on the GABA A receptor, which makes an allosteric or conformational change uh, to the, basically, to the receptor, influencing the GABA. Uh, kind of where it sits right there, and that allows increase in frequency of the chloride ion coming in. Now, if I have more chloride ion coming in, what's that going to do? It's going to create a hyper, hyper polarization. Okay, I know some key words that you might, you know, GABA A, allosteric, hyper polarization. So then the question for here is where does that occur, you know, in this diagram? Let's think about this, and is, is, and let's just break it down even even more simply. When we do this, you know, here we are at the basically A is going to be what? That's going to be your resting potential, okay? Resting potential, and then as it climbs, all right, as it climbs, what comes in? Now, if you didn't even know, okay, and you're like guessing, okay, and you didn't watch my previous videos, look at this, negative 100, okay? negative 50. Now, if it gets to negative 50, this is going to be the threshold, okay? Because once we go above that, boom, it fires, right? So if I'm negative and I'm becoming less negative or more positive, you, should, you could say, 
Think of it like this. What's coming in? Something with a plus sign. Okay, it's going to have a plus sign. And if it happens really fast, it's going to be sodium. Okay, so think on Sodium with the plus signs coming in, so I'm going to get more plus, more plus, more plus, and that's going to create this thing going from a negative 100. It's going to go up to a negative uh, 50. It, creates, it, it goes past that, and then it goes fast going up. Now, that's going to be called depolarization. Okay? Depolarization. And you're like, well, and, and I have always had trouble. Is it D? Is it re? All that stuff. Just remember this. The C, when it comes back down, is going to be repolarization. Ready? It's going to return, okay? It's going to return. That's easy. So this is going to be depolarization. This is going to be repolarization. So again, sodium with the plus sign is coming in, coming in. It goes up, creating, you know, more of a, a, a plus, more of an addition to this. It gets up here, then eventually the sodium channels close, and then what opens? Something releases. Well, if it's going back down, that means if it's going to go back negative, i got to get rid of something that's positive, Okay. And that's going to be my potassium. Okay, potassium leaves, and then goes down, goes down, goes down, goes down. Okay, and that's your repolarization phase. And then it gets down here. Now, when it gets down here, sometimes it overshoots just a little, but eventually it's going to get back to this resting potential. But what happens if I gave a medication that I didn't want it to quite go back to its previous, you know, threshold or previous uh, resting potential? I want it to go farther, okay? I want it to go farther because the farther down it goes, the less likely it's going to fire, okay? So that's why this D, okay, this D is going to be called hyperpolarization. And think about this. What is coming in? Remember, back to the, back to the benzo. What's coming in? Chloride ion. So it's a negative, okay? And this is just simple terms, okay? And this is just my way of doing it. It's a negative thing coming in, coming in, coming in. So it's going to make it even more negative, okay? More negative. So that's how I know the hyperpolarization is going to be answer choice D based on using a benzodiazepine. You better know the basic mechanism of glutamate uh, being more activating, GABA is more inhibitory. And then it works at the GABA A receptor, that's the benzodiazepine. It an, has an allosteric effect, okay? It increases the frequency of the chloride ion channel opening and increases the frequency of chloride coming in. Chloride's negative, so the more negative that comes in, it's going to overshoot more, create more of a hyperpolarization, therefore keeping things calmer because it's not going to be able to reach that threshold as easy, okay? But make sure you go back and look at those cardiac in, uh, videos too. I'll make some short videos kind of summarizing a lot of this stuff. But again, you got to know the mechanism of medication, and I can see how they're going to incorporate it into a graph, so you better know a lot of the terms that come with it. So, hope it was helpful, guys.